You know what would be cool? A rangefinder and a scope that talk to each other. So as I alluded, I've got a scope and a rangefinder combo that talk to each other. They're connected via Bluetooth, and uh, in theory, all you have to do is pull up to a spot, bust out your rangefinder, range your target, let's say it's at 500 yards. It communicates through an app on your phone and the scope all together, and inputs the correct drop data for you, and then just displays a red dot inside of the scope in the exact spot that you need to hold on your target, and it's already calculated for your drop data. That's pretty sweet. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I am going to give you a full review of the SIG BDX. This is the two and a half, no, three and a half to ten. And um, I've got the phone app installed on my phone. I've got the range finder. And I've got the scope mounted up to my Seekins SP10. This is a 308. And we're going to be stretching out to 600 yards today. And In a nutshell, what it does is that there's a phone app and a range finder and the scope that all Bluetooth together. Super simple to set up in the app. You just kind of pair them. Like if you've got a, a Bluetooth wireless speaker or something else, it's, it's every bit that simple to set up and, and operate. And then um, once your ballistic data has been inputted into the phone app, now remember garbage in, garbage out for that. You've got to get the exact data correctly inputted from the ammunition that you're shooting. You need to know feet per second, you need to know how far your scope is offset uh, from the rifle. There's details there that you need to set up. So it's going to take a little bit of work on the front end and a little bit of know-how on the front end to know how to get all that data correct and put into the app so that the final product that comes out for you is is correct and is is actually on so to speak. Um, so once that is done though, the theory is you pull up to a, a spot where you're going to hunt. Let's say you're driving around out in Wyoming on some public ground. Um, you're driving the, the gravel roads and you see an antelope out there at distance. You're like, I want to shoot that antelope. So you hop out of the truck, you get your gun, you get your rainfinder, and you range that antelope, let's say at 500 yards. And the rangefinder sends that data to the phone and the scope and it pops up an orange dot inside of the scope in the exact spot that you need to hold over to compensate for the drop of let's say your 308 round like I'm shooting here at 500 yards. The big question that you may have running around in the back of your mind, and I had that same question as well, is how does it handle the wind? Because we all know if you're a long range shooter, the wind is the art form in all of this. Okay, you still have to know how to call the wind. If you look down range at your 500 yard antelope target and you think the wind is a 15 mile per hour full value wind, you know, coming straight from let's say your, your 90 degrees or well, your right or your left, whatever it is. <laughs> anyway, don't make me do math. It's early in the morning and I'm not happy about about my ability to do math in the morning. 270, what is it? 90 degrees and 270, anyway. Straight east, straight west, right, left, whatever it is, full value. Um, if you can't get your wind call correct uh, and inputted correctly into your, into your app, the wind hold... Um, the wind hold dot that shows up inside the scope is it's not going to be correct and you know we want to be ethical hunters we want to be solid target shooters when we go out we want first round impacts that's what we're after whether you're hunting or whether you're just shooting steel targets first round impact is preferable so if you don't know how to call your wind the dot that shows up inside the scope it's not going to help you at all. Whatever you call your wind as and input into the app, that's where the dot's going to go inside the scope. So you still have to know how to call wind. This system just makes it really simple and really fast. So where I think this thing shines, and let me let me give you some detail on it too. Um, again, this is this is the kind of the low end entry level model to the to the Sierra 3 BDX line. Um, this guy MSRP's for right around $600, I believe, $599, something like that. 
I feel like 308 on a gas gun, anything inside of 500 yards, target or animal, is going down in a hurry with this kind of a system. I really was impressed with how easy and intuitive it is to set this all up range find. These things communicate seamlessly together. There was no hesitation or waiting or think like the system. The computer doesn't have to think about it. It just works. Uh, it seems to be good fit and finish and the price is really not that bad for a, you know, uh, an optic of this quality. The glass is clear and bright. One of the main downsides is that uh, it is a fixed parallax, okay? If you shoot long range, one of the things that you need to do is to be able to remove parallax. You know, that could cause errors out at further distances um, if it doesn't have parallax adjustment. The other kind of main downside to me is that the windage dot that shows up inside of the scope when you correct for wind is up on the, the main horizontal stadia line. So you've got your crosshairs, You've got your vertical line and your horizontal line, and you know where those cross in the center is where you set up your 100 yard zero, right? Point of aim, point of impact, 100 yards right in the center. Well, on that horizontal line, the windage dot that shows up, whether it's at 300 yards, 500 yards, 700 yards, the dot that shows up for windage is on that horizontal line, right? While your drop data dot is further down here somewhere. I don't really like that because then I have my brain has to go, okay, I can come down to my dot, but then I have to also come over and the the point at which you're you're holding on your target to correct for wind according to their dot up here, you're actually holding out in the wide open, like you're just holding out in thin air. I don't like that. I want some sort of a hash mark. Um, I would like to see that dot show up down there on the exact spot that I need to hold over, um, but it doesn't. It stays up on the horizontal uh, the horizontal crosshair up at the, the 100 yard level. So that's a downside to me. Um, just makes it not quite as quick because then I have to try to figure out what it is out in thin air and in space. Um, I think the positives vastly outweigh the negatives on this setup. This will be a great setup for a kid uh, or a new shooter, just somebody you're trying to get into the, the, the game and the sport, uh, especially hunting situation for a kid. You can just be like, hey, there's a target out there at 400 yards. You can just range it for your kid and be like, see the dot that showed up? Put the dot on the animal and take the shot. It's really going to be that simple. Um, I do think it's a pretty great system, guys. I, I don't have a lot more to say on it other than that. I think it's worth checking out. Uh, it is easy to use, and I think it's a good price point. The glass is fine. Uh, checks a lot of boxes for people. So um, I had fun shooting this, so thanks to SIG for, for sending it over for a review. You guys also might want to check out our sponsor, Venture Munitions. Those guys are great. Give us a lot of support here at TFB TV. Provide us with ammunition, those sorts of things. Also consider supporting us through Patreon. There's a link in the description below. Um, get yourself over there and signed up, you know, um, get entered to win monthly giveaways of uh, lots of gear and um, we're giving away guns over there. So man, it's a good time and um, we thank you guys a lot for watching the videos. Tune in again soon for more great videos from TFB TV.